You left the bag on his head? Well, can he breathe? Do you at least punch holes so he doesn't suffocate? Hello. Your mother knew exactly what would happen once you showed up here in Kirat. I'll always have your back, brother. Since the success of Ubisoft's previous Far Cry 3, the developers slash publishers discovered a rare kind of gem that they feel they also found in their beloved Assassin's Creed franchise. Players from all over the world have shouted their love for the open world sandbox, where guns, psycho-terrorists and breathtaking locales help draw the consumer even further into these free-roaming worlds. This time gone are the tropical jungles and blood-soaked beaches, and now we find ourselves upon the snowy mountains and lush forests of Karat, another country shadowed by the chaos of war, and of course being abused by yet another psychotic leader. The question though, is does Far Cry 4 take its sandbox series into a direction that makes Karat's lands a breath of alpine fresh air, or has Far Cry as we know it, officially passed its prime? Waking up on a cluttered bus we begin our journey through the eyes of AJ Garley, an assumed nobody who has returned to his family's origins to fulfil the dying wish of his mother by scattering her ashes upon the mountain tops of her beloved homeland. As with all Far Cry games, we are quick to learn that tasks, no matter how innocent, must be fueled by the fires of war, and AJ quickly finds himself pushed into the unrest between the country's rebel alliance known as the Golden Path and Karat's eccentric dictator, Pagan Min. Strong, silent type. I like it. It's a pretty standard storyline that boasts hints of potential excellence, only to be once again let down by Ubisoft's lackluster understanding of good narrative. Kirat is a beautiful setting to place the snow-bitten feuds about the coming of age of a society's belief system that for some reason becomes a messy yet empty adventure, where true potential ultimately becomes plot poisoning and disappointment. The first problem is our hero AJ, who in some ways has little to no reason for taking part in the two-sided conflict. We are once again shoehorned in as the pushover protagonist, who goes out of his way to help some of the most unlikable characters in gaming thus far. On one side we have the Golden Path, Karat's underground guerrilla rebels that were once led by AJ's revolutionary father. The group is split down the middle though, by two argumentative leaders. For one we have the beautiful and aspiring Anita, who wishes to take Karat into the modern age, and then we have Sabal, a Han soldier, hoping to save Karat's old traditions and teachings. On the opposing side, we have the self-pronounced God King Pagan Min, the hated, slightly psychotic, yet for some reason intriguing, main villain of the whole affair. This guy is typically typecast as one seriously bad egg, from ordering the murder and slavery of civilians, to basically just turning the once peaceful land into his own backyard playground. <laughs> We find though that these characters and their sheer reason for existing to be incredibly underused. Pagan, for instance, only appears around four times throughout the entire campaign, and this becomes a massive mistake on Ubisoft's part, not only because the game benefits from his entertaining personality, but also because you need a villain to want to passionately go after, and his presence comes off as underutilised and pointless. It's not really fair on a well-crafted character to be shoved to the sidelines and relegated to even more rare random phone calls, which only help in making you lust for more of his appearance. If the dictator of Turkmenistan can get j -Lo to sing him happy birthday, then who's to say I can't get my fading star of yesteryear? Let's see how much Kanye is going for. Do you follow him on Twitter? <laughs> he is gold. Oh, I would love to shoot the breeze with that young man. The bulk of the plot comes from the assumed branching story missions, where AJ picks sides during key events for Anita or Sabal. It is assumed, like introduced, that who you choose will eventually determine your ultimate outcome, but like so many games, it only comes down to one final decision. It's more evident early on where picking one side over the other will initially show anger from the opposite party, only to once again be, well, friendly and normal during the next mission. What becomes even more gruesome is Far Cry 4's little use of Karat's religious structure and its potential to aid in making the story more interesting. While Far Cry 3 reveled in its tribal themes, Far Cry 4 puts its locale's legacy on the back burner while only teasing and giving tastes of what it's all about. 
it's kind of grumbling to say the least, especially after the well-constructed introduction. It gives off a lingering smell that the story was dropped pretty quickly during the development process, and after experiencing the different endings, the only person who suffers here is sadly the player. You and me, man, new and improved tap bros. That's right, living the dream. Come on, punch it in. Boom! As one would expect, gameplay is what makes Far Cry excel once again. Kirat is a giant wonderland screaming to be explored, with tons of stuff to see and do I might add. The main dish is the game's fantastic combat, that sees the previous entry's refined stealth mechanics brought back once again, along with other fan favourites like the separate skill tree unlocks and improved driving controls. First we find Far Cry's army of varied and powerful weapons that return to make a statement of pleasure, from the recurve bow to the MS. 16 carbine. Signature weapons also make an encore, like the Shredder Vector variant, along with brand new signatures and standard weapons, such as a one handed crossbow or Blood Dragon's AGM 9 through Ubisoft's Uplay feature. A lot of these weapons can be fully customised too, with sights, silencers, and clip add ons to cater to the playstyle you want. I personally found myself switching constantly among the weaponised buffet and still had plenty to unlock by the game's closing curtain. It should be added too that all these tools of death feel great to handle and let loose, be it aiming down sights or even just doing a little bit of Rambo cosplay. Stealth, a massive feature in Far Cry, one skin makes itself a staple path of choice, with silent takedowns feeling just as satisfying no matter how many times you do them. The game also promotes constant use of its takedown system, from vertical strikes to room cleaning finishes, it is the main way to feeling like a new age badass. If a complaint had to be made though, it would be that Far Cry 4's battle system is just a little too small at times. Combat encounters range from a rather compact 5 plus man group to single two-person jeep patrols, and at frequent a time, the skirmishes can be over in a matter of seconds. This could be to keep the combat silky smooth, but it got so light on big scale battles that I never had to reload more than once during the majority of them. Better look around. Don't want to be his next victim. Understood! I found him! Unfired! We can take him! Ah! Unlike Far Cry 3's Jason, AJ also comes equipped with a cliff climbing grappling hook that can become really helpful when scouring the mountains of the land, it even sparks excitement at times when scaling or ascending a hidden area to find treasures and secrets only accessible through the gadget. It wouldn't be Far Cry either without having a ton of stuff to do as well, and believe me when I say that Far Cry 4 wants to keep you busy while also having fun at the same time. There is so much content resting within this instalment, from the many types of collectibles like masks, posters, radio towers and outposts, to actual narrative based side stories like the fantastic journey of Kalinag, a legendary warrior on a pilgrimage to protect Shangri-La from demon invaders. The sheer beauty and wonder of this four part story is even worth trudging through the main narrative for by itself, and I hope Ubisoft take it further in the future to come. Sure. Moving on, we also have the wildlife, which is another huge piece of the playtime puzzle, with more animals to hunt for craftable upgrades, and having the ability to ride elephants into the thick of battle for some epic Dumbo on human action. What is pretty commendable though, is that Mother Nature feels way more deadly this time around. Be it the air stalking eagles, to snow leopards, or giant creepy demon fish, you really feel like you are wandering this world and witnessing its circle of life. Be it through observation, or becoming Tiger Chow. Wait, what? what is that eagle? Did, did that just kidnap a pig? Far 
Far Cry 4 even brings more to the table through its social experience too. We've added cooperative features that let you play with a friend in Karat's giant open space as Far Cry's gun-toting regular Hank. Players wishing to take advantage of co-op will find everything but the story ready for the taking, and what's better is that captured outposts and fortresses can be fully reset if you feel like having a literal stab at them again with your chum. For competitive multiplayer, we finally get an injection that feels refined and not rushed. Sure, the 5v5 player count may seem small for the rather large maps, but both multiplayer factions bring in a variety to make matches interesting and engaging. Let's say you're more of a solo gamer though, then there is also the added survival arena, where you can fight waves upon waves of different enemies for a chance to top Ubisoft's leaderboards. What is great is that it all plays and feels addicting to get that one kill that puts you on the top of the podium as Karat's gladiatorial champion. Far Cry's map editor makes a comeback too, allowing the more creative side of the community to make their own custom levels and missions to challenge anyone who feels worthy. I mean, do you have what it takes to take down an army of goats? I, I, I don't. Finally we have to talk about the visuals, and my goodness is Far Cry 4 jaw-droppingly yum. Once again we are treated to a next generation experience, where simply looking at the vast lands you explore is a breathtaking sight to see. Krat features an eye drooling land to play around in, where the moon lights up during nighttime stalking perfectly to the sun simply dashing the leaves of trees as you walk under them. Even better is the quick loading times and near perfect frame rate on next generation consoles, where not a single drop in frames was noticeable no matter the chaos that ensued. Kret isn't just a flat mass of trees and water either, with tons of hidden tombs and temples containing caringly crafted statues and shrines, sometimes it's just worth it to stop and stare at the beauty there is there to behold. Like many open world games, Far Cry 4 isn't one to be immune from the occasional bugs and glitches. Expect to see the odd one or two inconsistencies, but it will never become anything to sour the experience. That's not including the oddly used texture and misplaced model as well, but again it was thankfully a rare occurrence. It would be a massive sin not to mention Far Cry 4's subtle but immersive soundtrack too, that fully takes advantage of its Indian inspirations and brings you that one step closer to the land you are playing in. Music is incredibly important for our gaming experiences, and just like Assassin's Creed Black Flag, it was commendable to see Ubisoft tap into its game setting just right once again. <laughs> A real trooper. Yes, you're the best guinea pig we've ever had. <laughs> Definitely the longest living one. Oh, by far. Far Cry 4 in a way has gone one step in the right direction for the series. Its story may be poor and it might actually have you feeling empty by its end, but the game's actual content like previous installments is where your time is to be had. Be it welcome co-op, refreshing multiplayer, or just the overwhelming smorgasbord of things to do, Far Cry 4 is an adventure not to be missed this generation. Proxy Playthroughs gives Far Cry 4 a soft, plump, and fulfilling gold muffin, but what do you think of Far Cry 4? Proxy would love to know, but until next time, ciao.